Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Macros are executed in forms by assigning the macro to an event associated with the command button. Whenever the associated button's event occurs, the macro will be executed. Most often, macros are associated with the click event of a command button. This lets the user execute the macro by clicking the related button. To add a command button control to a form that a user can click to launch a macro, open the desired form in Form Design View. Make sure the Use Control Wizards button is selected in the Controls button group in the ribbon. Next, click the Button Control in the Controls button group on the Design tab of the Form Design Tools contextual tab within the ribbon. Then, click and drag over the area in the form where you want to place the command button. The command button wizard will launch, letting you enter the text or select the icon to include on the face of the button and also choosing which macro to attach to the button's click event. Using the command button wizard is a very quick and easy way to assign a macro to a command button in a form. Alternatively, you can also assign a macro to an object's event by using the property sheet. While this is most often performed on command buttons, you can actually program macros to execute on events for many different types of form controls. To do this, select the object in the form to which you want to attach the macro, and then click the property sheet button to display the property sheet pane if needed. In the property sheet pane, click the event tab to view all of the available events for the type of object you selected. Typically, macros are assigned to the on-click event of a command button, which runs the macro when someone clicks the button. However, there are other types of objects and events to which you may find it useful to attach macros. For example, you might want a macro that runs when a user rolls their mouse pointer over a selected object. In this case, you would program the macro to launch on the selected controls on mouse move event. Once you've determined the appropriate event to associate with a macro, click into the Event Property field in the Event tab in the Property Sheet and select the name of the macro that you want to execute when that event occurs from the drop-down list that appears. Also, when in Form Design View, you can embed macros directly into the form. Macros that are embedded within a form do not appear as separate objects in the navigation pane. Macros that are created as separate objects and shown in the navigation pane are called standalone macros. In contrast to these types of macros, embedded macros can only be edited within the form. This reduces the number of database objects to manage in the navigation pane. It also ensures that if the form is copied in the future, the associated code used by the form will be copied as well since the code is contained in the properties of the form's controls. However, you cannot run an embedded macro from another form other than the one within which it is embedded. To create an embedded macro, first select the object in the form within which you want to embed a macro. Then click the Events tab within the Property Sheet. Find the event to which you want to attach an embedded macro and then click into the Events Property field shown in this tab. Next, click the Builder button, which looks like an ellipsis mark, and appears at the right end of the Events Property field. In the Choose Builder dialog box that appears, select the Macro Builder command and then click the OK button. This will open the new macro design window where you can build the macro as normal. However, when you are finished, just click the Close button in the Close button group on the Design tab of the Macro Tools contextual tab in the ribbon. Then click the Yes button to save the embedded macro into the form. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.